My friends, on September 12th of 2015, an act of Marian history took place. The Archbishop of Lipa, Philippines, Archbishop Raymond Arguelles, made a declaration of supernatural authenticity regarding the 1948 apparitions of Our Lady at Lipa under the title of Our Lady Mediatrix of All Grace. Now, in many ways, my friends, the, the drama of this represents a, a almost a, appears like a, a Hollywood screenplay. What happens in 1948 is that this young woman leaves her mannered home at four in the morning. She goes to the local Carmel because she knows her father, who is the regional judge of the area, does not want her to enter the Carmelite monastery. But she leaves, leaves at four in the morning. She gets there. Her brother uh, comes to the Carmel with a gun and tells her, his sister, whose name is Teresita, little Therese, to return home, otherwise he would kill her, and her response is, it's okay, this is a good place to die. And fortunately, the brother does not fire the bullet, and the young postulant starts her postulancy with the Carmelite order. Approximately three months later, on September 12th of 1948, Our Lady begins to appear to this postulant. And in many ways, it's a message very similar to the message of Fatima. And in fact, Our Lady says, uh, what I'm saying here is very similar to what I said at Fatima. Now, the heart of the message is a call to praying the rosary uh, as a means of protection. There's the prophecy of great uh, internal and domestic uh, struggle within the Philippines, that is, persecutions of the church, that the the enemy of the church would attack uh, the presence of the church there. There's even a reference which will come out a little bit later in, in the form of a revealed message about the role of China, uh, that China has its plan to take over the world and one of its favorite possibilities would be the Philippines itself. Well, in the process of this approval, you have a few days later from the initial operations, the auxiliary bishop, Bishop uh, Oviar coming, and he asks for a sign. And as a result, rose petals fall from the sky uh, surrounding the convent, and even within the convent, it's an open-aired convent, as are many of the churches in the Philippines. Well, what continues is that the local bishop, the auxiliary in this case, Oviar, becomes uh, convinced of authenticity. Our Lady continues to appear for 15 consecutive days in the month of September uh, in 1948. The local bishop is also very favorably disposed and by 1950 you have in general a positive statement. Then you have the rearing of the church human and in this case you have let's say a church authority from outside of the Philippines but now has a particular role in the Philippines as a nuncio put forward what could rightly be called a persecution of the apparitions. Uh, the visionary is told that she must either denounce these apparitions of Our Lady or to leave the convent. The, the, the auxiliary bishop, who was first in favor, uh, is demoted and transferred into a distant diocese. The local bishop, who was in favor, uh, is removed and ends the rest of his years literally uh, rolling tobacco for an occupation because he has his faculties removed. Uh, the nuncio then has six bishops convene and under the penalty of excommunication, they have to renounce these apparitions. So a, a very unfortunate, and in this case has to be identified as a type of ecclesiastical abuse takes place in this region, but Our Lady always wins in the end. Devotion continues, uh, the visionary leaves uh, the convent but continues as an extern for the next 40 years. She's in her late 80s at present. The people continue to believe in the authenticity, although they're obedient to the church. Well, then in 1993, a wonderful archbishop, Archbishop Gaviola, expresses his personal belief uh, in authenticity. I had the honor of meeting him back in the 1994. His own qu only question was, Our Lady came as mediatrix of all grace rather than all graces. Is that a problem? I said, no, it's not a problem because grace is a quality of the soul. So you don't have to use a, a, a plural version. The church has 
for well over two centuries taught Our Lady's role as a mediatrix of all grace and of all graces. Both terms have been used. But then finally, uh, in 2014, you have a homily from the present Archbishop, our Bishop, Archbishop Arguelles, where he, pay, where he states his personal belief in the authenticity. And September 12th of 2015, he makes a formal declaration, which includes several of these points of what unfortunately would be rightly called ecclesiastical force and pressure. Interesting to note that the two bishops involved, who are so greatly mistreated, uh, both have some elements of process for their beatification in and their cause uh, in the workings. So humbly and obediently did they accept this, this inappropriate action from an outside uh, influence in terms of these apparitions. So she comes as Our Lady Mediatrix of All Grace. And what's fascinating in terms of, of history is that this is the same time, uh, say for a year in difference, that Our Lady is appearing to Ida Perdiman in Amsterdam, also calling forward uh, a recognition and an ultimate definition of Our Lady's co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. And we know theologically as well that Mary can't be mediatrix unless she's first co-redemptrix. In other words, it would make arbitrary her role as mediatrix, the dispensing of grace, if she did not have the unique role with and under Jesus in the acquisition of grace as the co-redemptrix. So short form is mediatrix because she's co-redemptrix. And this is beautifully relayed in these two now church-approved apparitions. So I encourage you uh, to rejoice with this approval. Again, it is a confirmation that heaven indeed wants Our Lady's role as mediatrix of all grace recognized and that she cannot be mediatrix of all grace unless her role as co-redemptrix is likewise recognized as that is the foundation for her, dist her uh, distribu distribution, her dispensing of the graces. So we continue to pray. It's a nice step, I would say, towards the dogmatic definition of Our Lady's role as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. In fact, Archbishop Arguelles includes in his early paragraphs this hundred-year petition for the dogma of Mary as a mediatrix of all grace, which started in 1915 by the renowned Belgian Cardinal, Cardinal Mercier. So let's pray for this definition. Uh, as Mercier put, even in the, the original petition, mediatrix is dependent and subordinate to Our Lady's role as co-redemptrix. They go together. She's a mother who suffered for us. She's a mother that nourishes us. She's a mother as advocate that pleads on our behalf. So we say congratulations to Archbishop Arguelles and to the local people of Lipa, but also a worldwide confirmation that she is the mediatrix of all graces and heaven wants that role acknowledged and defined. Thank you. God bless.